Hello and welcome to another edition of Inventor's Quick Tips. Today we are discussing the topic of claim strategies. And for this discussion we'll be using a simple mechanical invention in the example. So first let's go over some basic claim facts. The basic filing fee entitles the inventors to 20 total claims with three of those 20 claims being independent claims. There are different types of claims such as claims for methods, directed to an apparatus, compositions, product by process, and others. There is no one-size-fits-all approach to which type of claims to use. It really depends on the invention and to some extent the business model for the invention as to what types of claims make the most sense. If you need more information on the basics of what claims are and how they work, I have a video on that topic which I will link in the description. Let's use a simple mechanical invention for this discussion. Let's say we invented this mousetrap. It's pretty simple. It has a few parts like the wooden platform, the spring, the arm, and the bait tray. Pretty simple stuff. So what kind of claim strategy might we use for a simple mechanical invention such as this? To form a claim strategy, we can first focus on the independent claims. And once we have these independent claims in place, we can then add dependent claims to complete the claim set. It would seem to be appropriate in this case to have a claim to the apparatus. So we could have an apparatus for trapping a mouse comprising A, B, and C, where A, B, and C are the various parts like the platform, spring, and arm of the trap, for example. And of course these are not real claims. We are just using this format to illustrate the types of claims we might use. It could also be possible to have claims to a method of using the device. So here we have a method for catching a mouse using the trap that comprises an A, B, and a C. We could also have a claim family directed to the method of making the mouse trap. So here's a method for making a mouse trap comprising mounting an A onto a B and fastening a C onto the B and so forth. Now let's take a look at our second independent claim for the method of using the apparatus. Who does this? Let's ask that. Who, who will use this method? Who will infringe this claim? Probably the end consumer. In their home, he or she will buy some traps to try to catch mice. We may choose not to use this claim set. Why? Because it's unlikely that it would be worthwhile to sue end users for infringement in this case. In this case, with something like a mousetrap, it may be more trouble than it's worth. So we may forego this claim family and instead make a second apparatus independent claim, this one having A, B, D, and E. So it's different than the first one, but again, focusing on the apparatus. So then we have two apparatus claim sets. The first is a more broad claim set, starting with just elements A, B, and C. And the second set is more detailed, having A, B, D, and E. So more things in that second claim set to start with. Let's take a second look at our method for making the apparatus. Who does this? Could it be a factory that assembles these things? If so, then this claim set may be worth having to provide some protection on the manufacturing of the apparatus. But what if it was sold as a kit and the end consumer assembles the kit, then who's making the mousetrap? If it's the end user, then again we might decide to forego this claim set and make better use of the independent claims we have at our disposal by having yet another apparatus claim. So we can add this claim instead of the method of making the mousetrap claim. So now we have the first independent claim, which is pretty broad. The second independent claim, which adds a few more things. And a third independent claim that adds a couple more things. And then we can add dependent claims for each of these independent claims to make a full, complete claim set. So what are some takeaways or lessons we can learn from this example? One is that claim strategy depends on the type of invention. In this example, we focused on a simple mechanical invention. Perhaps I'll make one for other types of inventions that I have experience with working on. 
Sometimes also the business model comes into play. I usually will ask inventors I work with, how do you plan to make money with this invention? How is it sold, shipped, assembled, etc.? Because having an idea about how those things work can help determine what is the best claim strategy for a particular situation. In the mousetrap example, if the inventor said that they plan to sell it as a kit that the end user assembles, then claims to the method of making the device may not be as useful as having additional claims for the mousetrap apparatus itself. Remember that you can have multiple sets of claims. You are entitled to three independent claims with the filing fee, but more independent claims can be added for an additional fee. Finally, again, there is no one-size-fits-all method that works here. It really depends on what the invention is, how it will be used, and how it will be made. In some cases, a certain type of claim, such as a method of using or method of making, may not be as useful as an additional apparatus claim. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If so, please like, share, and subscribe, and thanks again for watching.